We had like one day of nice weather yesterday. And it's just gone. It's all raining. Oh, it's kind of cold. Let's, let's get on the video. Uh, um, it looks like Sophie's been doing her uh, um, ah, uh, that's, uh, it's a bit annoying. I, I saw that out later. Let's just go get that talking headshot stuff done. <laughs> okay, so we're back. Uh, let's get on with the video. So, if you don't know, recently I went out on a walk. I took a bunch of photos. Uh, they should all have been going on the Instagram. Make sure you like and follow that. And yeah, I really liked them. So, I thought maybe I'd go through and show you how I edit my photos. Even if you don't like editing photos or doing all this, any of this media stuff, it's always quite cool I find finding out someone's process when they make something, especially when they put a lot of time and effort into the art that they create. So this might just be like a nice thing and plus you might learn a thing or two. If you do want to follow along with me, I recommend getting a uh, Lightroom, like on the phone, you know? Uh, Lightroom on mobile is free and I'll be using the like the one on the desktop. So you should be able to kind of follow along for the most part. There's only a few things that are missing out, especially on the free version. So I guess let's just hop onto Lightroom. <laughs> just as soon as I fix this mess. <laughs> yeah, if you guys didn't know, this is kind of like a general art space and storage in the house. So Sophie likes to go and do all of her art stuff here and just cause it's out the way, you know? And I like to film in here cause I can, can completely control the lighting in here, so like, you know, <laughs> it works. Okay, and we're back, and we're ready for filming, we're ready to edit these photos, let's just get right into it. Okay, so this is Lightroom. If no one's ever met Lightroom, this is what you're greeted with when you import your photos. Okay, so whenever I open an image, I like to do two things. One is cropping your photo to fit what I want it to be. And also the second one is to apply lens corrections, which I'll get into in just a sec. First is cropping. So your cropping tool is up here. It's like this weird kind of box with like, you know, noughts and crosses kind of box. You click that and it gives you this overlay. So I normally crop your image for one of two reasons. One is because it's for a thumbnail, and for that I would go up here, and where it says original, I would select the 16 by nine, because that's the aspect ratio for a thumbnail on YouTube. And if this photo is only going to Instagram, then I would click on this option called four by five slash eight by 10, because that's resolution for photos on Instagram. For now, I'm just gonna leave it at 16 by nine. And I want most of that image, you know? So click done down here, and we've cropped it to what we want. Now onto lens corrections. Lens corrections is right at the very bottom here. It's uh, this one, these two tick boxes under this header called lens corrections. <laughs> Funny that, right? <laughs> so anyway, I'll tick both of them uh, because in every camera pretty much, when you take a photo, there's a slight bit of distortion so I like to correct for that just to make the whole photo look nice. If you um, kind of look, kind of the photo warps, like especially near those edges, and it just makes the photo look a bit more professional and nicer if you do that. Uh, next up, I like to go to this white balance section here. So this bit is kind of like to correct uh, some stuff when you're in camera. Uh, thankfully in camera, I managed to nail that and basically get it where it kind of needs to be for this. So. That's good. Less work for me now. Now onto this section called tone and you got a bit of presence underneath but we don't really need that for now. So we've got tone and this is where you can kind of stylize your image so from here on it's kind of a bit more preference based. For me I really like to have a quite a nice bit of contrast in there. Not too much otherwise it looks weird. See no. So maybe like leave it around 40. Uh, then highlights I think in the background there it's a tiny bit uh, overexposed in the highlights, which is just the whitest parts of the image. So I'm just gonna take this here highlight slider and bring it all the way down. Nice, that's, that's looking quite good. Now also, as a personal preference, I like to make mine a tiny bit darker. It does add a bit more contrast. So I'm probably gonna be good around negative 0.4. I'm looking nice. 
Okay, if we scroll down again, we're onto my favorite section of Lightroom at any bit of photo editing. So this section is called the HSL like kind of section of it all, uh, which sounds really complicated and like an artsy acronym and it kind of is, but it's not that complicated. <laughs> That's what I wanted to say. So HSL stands for three words. You've got hue, saturation, and luminance. Uh, again, those sound very technical. Uh, they're not really. Uh, hue is basically like the type of color you're uh, like editing. So whether your red is more purpley than orange kind of thing. And your saturation is about like how vibrant those colors are like individually. And then luminance is about how bright or how dark those colors are in the image. Uh, now that was a lot of information all at once. So if you didn't quite get that, go back, rewind, listen, and then carry on. <laughs> The reason I like this section so much is just because this is where you get a very stylized edit. So let's get on there. As you can see here, we've got all the colors broken down and you can adjust their hue, their saturation and their luminance. So for my style, I really like to promote color contrast, which <laughs> a lot of things in this video are sounding very technical. They're not really that technical, but what color contrast basically is, is on a color wheel, you have colors, duh. And the ones that are on opposing sides of the color wheel naturally contrast with each other when put next to each other. I mean, if you've ever been in an art classroom or any art class really, this thing is kind of shoved down your throat. So, but for now, I'm just gonna put it in the corner so you guys can see it for reference. Anyway, in this image, you can see that I'm wearing this kind of like blue denim jacket, you know, the one I'm famous for. Um, and I was thinking that if we made this a bit more teal, it would contrast really nicely with some orange in the skin. So we're going to go here. This is basically a focal point in most of my images. If there's any kinds of blue, I will make it more teal. So if you, if I drag that along, can you see the jacket's got a lot more teal in it? Now I don't want too much, so probably like around 20 yeah that looks nice and then because we're trying to contrast blue and orange we'll quickly go over to the orange section we'll bump that up on the hue and make it just a bit more saturated that's looking great okay that's looking great now but if i'm looking at this properly i think there's one more color combination that we can use to add a bit more contrast to this so we've got this green in the background here with these like nice little holly bushes. And what contrasts with green? If you look at the color wheel, that's right, magenta. Well, purple, but we call it magenta in the biz because we're cool like that. So we've got this green. Um, I like to make my greens a bit more green. And top tip here, I don't really like the color yellow. That's not a top tip. The top tip is that if you take this yellow slider and push it all the way over to the greens, you get a lot more greens in your image. Now, um, that's looking a bit much for me. So I'm gonna take down that saturation. Uh, still a bit much. There we go, that's looking nice. We're now we're gonna go over and we're gonna put some purples in. So we're just gonna move that over there and move those magentas, which way? We'll just put it over there, make it a bit more saturated. If we want to, we can go up here and add a bit more purple in there. And I think that's looking pretty nice. Now I'm just gonna quickly go tidy up the rest of the colors. It's kind of just like nailing everything. You're gonna have to go back and forth, adjusting certain colors back and forth. Um, but it's all worth it in the end if you get a great image. So just give me a quick sec. Cool, so those colors are cleaned up a bit more. And it's probably not a big difference, but I like it how I like it. So let's move on to the next section. So if we scroll down here, we don't really need to touch most of this. If you're gonna sharpen your image, just don't do it too much. It looks really bad if you sharpen your image a lot. Go down here, past effects. And we wanna go into this tab called calibration. Uh, we don't really need to do a lot in here, and this one's a bit difficult to explain and really advance. But this is just a quick thing that I like to do to make my greens look just that little bit better. So 
So I like to take this green primary and shove it over there, which gives this really nice kind of like desaturated kind of faded greens that I'm just more of a fan of because I hate greens in my photos and because they're just so annoying to edit. But yeah, that's what I do. And then to finalize this image, I like to go up here to the gradient filter. I'm not gonna cover this a whole ton, uh, mainly because uh, most apps don't have this. It's mainly just Lightroom and a lot of the paid ones. So I just like to go in and darken my photo a bit on this side, because I think it's just a little bit too bright. <laughs> cool, and that's pretty much done with that image. We'll just go on to a few other ones to kind of show you what we're doing and a few other examples and ways that I work through my photos. So let's get on with that. Okay, we brought up a new photo here. So this one you've probably also seen on the Instagram. Make sure you go and like and follow the Instagram account, <laughs> link below. So this photo is really difficult to like edit because I've got this like really bright light coming right at me. And normally when I'm going into making a photo, I have some kind of vision in my head about what I want the photo to look like. This one, I don't. <laughs> when I don't know what I'm gonna do with a photo, one of the main things I like to do is go through presets. Uh, presets are a whole nother deal. They're basically someone else's kind of edits made into like an automatic thing. You can find your presets like on this little side tab here and if you scroll over them it kind of gives a preview of what the photo would look like if you put that preset on. So I like to go through and find a preset that kind of grabs my eye. So I quite like this desaturated blue, light shadows and medium clarity. It's a long name but I quite like that vibe so I'm gonna click it and then from that point on that it's kind of the same process. I like to take away those highlights. Gives me a bit more of the sky. Maybe we'll drop down the exposure a bit, get a bit more of that like clarity back into it. Maybe up that contrast. Uh, oh, before we forget, we need to crop that bad boy. So let's make that 16 by nine. Maybe that will look nice because it's a wide shot. Uh, yeah, that looks good. Also. If you hadn't noticed, this preset's done a whole bunch of things to my image. So if you look at this kind of graph here, it's added loads of these points. This graph is a whole separate video by itself. It's called the tone curve. Don't worry about it for now. It's really complicated. I'm a whole new video, yeah. Here it's also made a few adjustments to my HSL tab. Not a whole ton, but just, it looks nice. I might add my signature teal blues to that water ass ah, looking great oh uh gotta add those lens corrections nice this is looking great i think here as well if you can see there's a little purple in this guy that's just like a camera and lens defect uh because it's purple we could probably remove it in this hsl tab if we just went to purple and took it out with the saturation and maybe magenta there we go that makes the image a lot cleaner but anyway, um, that's pretty much what I would do for this photo. Not a whole ton. That's how I edit my photos. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. Um, it was a very, very quick rundown of what I do to edit my photos. It looks like a lot of the stuff that I talked about is super complicated, which, you know, it is. And they probably all deserve like their own separate videos to try and explain it. So yeah, I mean, it's more content. So I'll probably go through maybe a bit later on once this is all kind of died down and, and explain a lot of the stuff more in depth because I'm trying to keep this under 10 minutes and I don't want you watching like a 15 minute video because that's just boring. This is like probably five years of editing photo experience so don't expect you to go like hit the ground running with this. It takes a lot of practice. But yeah, hope you liked the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.